Hi friends, welcome to Learn with Lijo YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about the important facts and formulas of fluid mechanics. Uh, these equations and facts are used for interview and other competitive exams. First of all, we are going to learn about what is ideal fluid and real fluid. Ideal fluid. A fluid is said to be ideal if it is assumed to be both incompressible and non-viscous. Its bulk modulus is infinite. Second one is real fluid. Real fluid have viscosity, fine compressibility and surface tension. And points to remember, please note these two points. These two points are very important. Ideal fluid has no surface tension. Ideal fluid are imaginary and do not exist in nature. Next topic is specific weight and specific volume. Specific weight is notated by omega and it is also known as weight density. That is, it is a ratio of weight to the volume. Weight is equal to mg by volume. We know that mass by volume is rho, so mg by V equal to rho into G, where rho is density, G is acceleration due to gravity. Then specific weight of water is 9810 Newton per meter cube. If an interviewer asks you what is the specific weight of water, now we can say that 9810 Newton per meter cube. Next is what is specific volume. Specific volume is nothing but 1 by density. Next term is specific gravity. It is denoted by S. It is also known as relative density. Specific gravity is the ratio of density of fluid to the density of standard fluid. Density of fluid by density of standard fluid. And also it can be written as specific weight of fluid by specific weight of standard fluid. Then you have to remember these two points. That is specific gravity of water is 1 at 4 degrees Celsius. And for mercury it is 13.6. Remember that specific gravity of wa water is 1 at 4 degrees Celsius. And specific gravity of mercury is 13.6. Another one is specific gravity varies with temperature. Therefore, it should be determined at specific temperature. Okay, that is 4 degrees Celsius or 27 degrees Celsius. Next is Newton's law of viscosity. Friends, remember that Newton's law of viscosity is a very important topic in mechanics of fluid. Newton's law of viscosity is nothing but tau is equal to mu into du by dy. That is equal to mu into d theta by dt. We know that tau is shear stress. Mu is coefficient of viscosity or absolute viscosity or dynamic viscosity. Here du by d by equal to velocity gradient. d theta by dt equal to rate of angular deformation or rate of shear strain. One important point is for Newtonian fluid, coefficient of viscosity remains constant. That is very important. And next the term is viscosity or kinematic viscosity. We know that what is viscosity? It is nothing but due to viscosity, a fluid of is resistance to flow, like friction. Okay. Now, dynamic viscosity. Dynamic viscosity is notated by mu. And it so, SI unit is Pascal per second. SI unit of dynamic viscosity is Pascal per second. It can be also written as Newton second per meter square. In CGS unit, it is Poise or Dyne second per centimeter square. Another one uh, very important equation is uh, point is that is nothing but 1 Poise is equal to 0.1 Newton second per meter square. This equation is, we can use it in problems. Next is kinematic viscosity. Kinematic viscosity nu is equal to 
dynamic viscosity mu by mass density rho mu by rho mu by rho is kinematic viscosity it's the same unit is meter per second when it comes in cgs centimeter square per second or stock remember one stock is equal to 10 raised to minus 4 meter square per second and next is some points very important points that is viscosity of liquids decreases with temperature whereas viscosity of gases increases with increase in temperature next is liquids with increasing order of viscosity are gasoline water crude oil castor oil viscosity of water is 1 centipoise at 1 degree celsius viscosity of water at 1 degree celsius is 1 centipoise viscosity of liquids is due to cohesion and molecular momentum transfer now we are going to learn about types of fluids fluids can be classified mainly into two one is newtonian and non-newtonian newtonian fluid is nothing but fluids that follow newton's law of viscosity and non-newtonian fluid is fluids that do not follow newton's law of viscosity and now non-newtonian fluid is again divided into two time independent and time dependent fluids time independent fluid is of three types and time dependent fluid is of two types next is non-newtonian fluids these do not follow Newton's law of viscosity the relation between shear stress and velocity gradient is tau equal to a into du by dy the all raised to n plus b where a and b are constants depending upon type of fluid and condition of flow now remember for dilated fluids n is greater than 1 and b is 0 example for dilated fluids are butter quicksand for Bingham plastic fluids n is 1 and b is not equal to 0 example for Bingham plastic fluids are sewage sludge drilling mud toothpaste and gel these fluids always have certain minimum shear stress before the yield for pseudoplastic fluids n is less than 1 and b equal to 0 example for pseudoplastic fluids very important example for pseudoplastic fluids note it paper pulp rubber solution lipsticks paints blood polymetric solutions if anyone asks you what type of fluid is blood then we will say it is a pseudoplastic fluid for n is less than 1 and b not equal to 0 in this viscosity increases with time example for thixotropic fluids are printing enamels and the last point is rheophastic fluids for rheophastic fluids n is greater than 1 and b not equal to 0 viscosity decreases with time in rheopatic fluids example are gypsum solution in water benetonite solution in this figure there is a relation between shear stress and du by dy this figure is very important newtonian fluid dilaton fluid pseudoplastic fluid rheoplastic fluid ideoplastic fluid Thixotropic fluids are also notated in x-axis you can see that ideal fluid next important name is compressibility compressibility can be notated as beta in it is a reverse of bulk modulus of elasticity compressibility beta 
equal to 1 by k that is inverse of bulk modulus of elasticity 1 by k is equal to minus dv by vdp now v is equal to dp by rho into dp here k equal to bulk modulus of elasticity rho equal to density and v is equal to volume next name is isothermal bulk modulus that is kt kt equal to p final that is rho rt next is adiabatic bulk modulus ka equal to gamma p final gamma is we know that cp by cv specific heated constant pressure by specific heated constant volume next important term is surface tension pressure inside bulb and jet surface tension occur at the interface of liquid and a gas or at the interface of two fluid surface tension is inversely proportional to temperature and it also act when fluid is at rest now not that pressure inside the drop if the drop is solely like sphere then p equal to 4 sigma by d if pressure inside a bubble it will become p is equal to 8 sigma by d and pressure inside jet equal to p equal to 2 sigma by d d equal to diameter of the drop p is equal to gauge pressure this equation is very very important in fluid mechanics now remember some of the points it is a surface phenomenon surface tension is a surface phenomenon surface tension is force per unit length that is newton per meter for water air interface at 20 degree celsius its value is 0.0736 newton per meter at critical point liquid vapor state are same thus surface tension equal to zero it is due to cohesion only now capillary action height of water in capillary tube can be calculated by h is equal to 4 sigma cos theta by rho gd h equal to rise in capillary sigma equal to surface tension or water and glass d is equal to diameter of the tube theta equal to angle of contact between light and the material theta is 0 degree for water and glass theta is 128 degree for mercury and glass not this point this is very important when a liquid surface supports another liquid of density rho b then rising capillary is given as h is equal to 4 sigma cos theta by rho minus rho b into gd two points are very important capillary action is due to adhesion and cohesion and also by both for capillary action diameter of tube should be less than 3 cm friends hope you all learn this topic share with your friends and also subscribe this channel we will bring you more more interview questions and facts on mechanical engineering soon bye bye